What's up, guys? Boy Benny. In the news business, when it rains, it pours, and it is currently a monsoon of Candace Owens news. Candace Owens has removed the Daily Wire from her Twitter bio after they broke up, ladies and gentlemen. She's also retweeted Jeremy Boring, the CEO of the Daily Wire, saying Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Candace Owens went on to say, I am free. I am free. I am free at last. I am finally free. Pinning this up to the top of her profile here. Five million followers on X. Candace Owens and the Daily Wire gone. Candace Owens posting about that uh, breakup and what she's up to next right here. It's Candace. The rumors are true. I am free. Welcome to my locals page. So much to talk about. Obviously, I'm going to take a couple of weeks here just to rebuild and to refocus and to create something that is actually mine and something that can't be threatened or taken because it belongs to me. I can't tell you enough how much your support has meant to me over the years. We're just getting started. Join the Locals page, obviously, here. You can support me and my work as an independent journalist, as an independent podcaster. Um, we're still going to be doing five days a week. There'll be tons of announcements coming in the next couple of weeks. And I guess the last thing I want to say is thank you. And for those of you that don't want to be on Locals and just want to support in any capacity, you can head to GoCandice.com. Thank you, guys. So Candace Owens saying what seems to me like going the Tucker route. If you're listening closely, Candace Owens wants to do her own independent thing. She doesn't want to be owned and operated by the corporate press. And she wants to be able to go and do the media hits that she wants and cover the stories that she wants. And that's super honorable, to be quite honest with you. And she also wants to go on perhaps some shows that if, if she did have a PR team, booking her uh, that they wouldn't book, right? Like, for instance, The Breakfast Club. Candace Owens was just on The Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club, if you're unfamiliar with it, is like the a monster in the media space. It has a huge listenership. Uh, it is urban radio oriented. Charlemagne the God is sort of like the the star podcast, like like host there, but it's like urban demographic radio, right? And so Candace Owens walking in very much into the lion's den uh, on that show, because the show is certainly center left, uh, for real. But after Candace Owens, uh, opens up everyone's mouth and shoves in a corn cob sized red pill, uh, will they be center left any longer? <laughs> Not sure. Candace Owens went on the show and just at an absolute bombshell appearance. We've clipped out some of our favorite, uh, segments from the show, but our man, I mean, you got to start with her saying that Democrats still live on, uh, that black people still live on Democrat plantation, that the government hates us, the American people, and that you got to wake up, right? You just, you got to wake up. It's incredible. And getting the entire room to agree with her. This is the magic of Candace Owens right here. It's time, okay? It's time. We've been doing this for a very long time in this country. Black America, wake up, okay? They don't like you. They don't like us, okay? There's so you're not, not anti America they government. has they yes. government. America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like the, the government, the American government, why would you think the American government wants to help you? Well, at what point in history has mm -hmm. that proven to be right? And I'll challenge that and I'll make it wider to all Americans. When has it ever been the circumstance that you felt that the government really just was out for your own best interests? interests? Think of them as a corporation. They want to grow themselves. They want new departments, bigger departments, uh, larger budgets like any other corporation would want. And they never want to leave D.C. because we don't have term limits, which we should have. Right. If we had term limits and said you can only serve for four years, well, then guess what they would be doing for those four years? Trying to shrink government because they'd have to come back out and, and be us. Right. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the way that your tax dollars are being spent, you should be outraged. You should be angry, but stop thinking that the enemy is, you know, they constantly have us arguing against each other, women versus men, black versus white, you know, it's a nonsense. The reason why they want us constantly warring is because it distracts from all of us coming together and taking a look at who the real criminals are. And the real criminal criminals are this small group, this small cadre of powerful people that I think we're virtually all still on a plantation. They just made it look nice. You know, you got a nice chair. We got mm -hmm. nice chairs here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we're show. all still on a on a plantation. Shut up. <laughs> Candace Owens, of course, talking to Black Urban Radio and telling them that the kind of the thing that they do every day, right, which is to create power for that community, is being diluted like every single second 
that a new criminal alien like pours into the country. And Candace Owens effectively saying that black votes won't matter because they're utter, they're completely replacing the black population, which you can see in the demographic charts with the, the number of people from Hispanic communities in South America coming here. That I mean, that's just a matter of demographic fact, right? And if you go to the South side of Chicago, or if you go to the Bronx in New York, that's what people will tell you if you put a mic in their face. But Candace Owens spitting bars uh, here on The Breakfast Club. With that moment, and I was really upset about it, but you're right. I was talking a lot about illegal immigration and saying this is something that we need to pay attention to because eventually the black vote's not going to matter. Something that they were, that they worked so hard for is not going to matter. They get enough illegals in, what are we at, 10 million under Biden? Mm -hmm. And they're doing it intentionally. Like it's going to be the same thing that they did to black Americans in the 60s. Um, what Lyndon Baines Johnson did when he established welfareism and the Great Society Act. They want to get these people in, offer them handouts, and turn them into economic slaves that will continue to vote for Democrats because they're getting free handouts. And it's it's incredibly racist, first and foremost, but because black Americans are still, a lot of black Americans, I should say, are still living under this deception that Lyndon Baines Johnson was a good president, even though he was an avowed racist. I mean, he hated black people. I mean, one of the, uh, he, so many times, I mean, hard R referring to us as the N-word. I'll have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. And this man is being hailed as a hero because he had to sign the Civil Rights Act, essentially with a figurative gun to his head because the country was on fire. You know, JFK had just died and um, there were riots in the streets protesting because of racism. And he did not want to sign it, but he did. And with the other hand, he signed the Great Society Act and incentivized welfareism and, you know, programs to incentivize not marrying black men. You know, to think that we had government agents knocking on the door, going into the homes of black women and being like, there better not be a man that lives here. We're just here to check mm -hmm. to make sure if you want this check, Dad can't be home. Every other ill that black America is facing today is because we've removed fathers from the home. So I am like a big, you know, I use my platform to talk about men a lot and the need for male leadership. Everything that is so harmful, this, you know, me too, false feminism, all of this crap. Candace Owens going super based, saying that taxation is just money laundering, which we totally agree with. Go. Now, it's first off, trillions of dollars. You're, you're, you're signing these omnibus bills. If you read into it where that where that money is going, it's insane. It's mm -hmm. it's literally going, you know, to museums, boards of museums. They're quite literally money laundering is what's happening when they sign these bills. But they keep it so that the information level is so low for Americans that it's like, oh, COVID's so bad. Like, we're going to give you a check that's like, you know, $300. This basically describes welfareism, right? Like, despite the fact that there's been trillions of dollars since um, the establishment of welfare, black Americans are poorer today than we were before it. People don't know this, but during the time of Jim Crow, before welfare was established in the 1950s, black Americans were actually outpacing white Americans in this country in terms of economic growth. And the reason for that was because our families were together. Like, we had good values. The government only wants to give you the bare minimum. But where's the rest of the money? Mm -hmm. Where is it going? They sign these bills making you think that this money is going to you. It's not. They are stealing from the American people. And it's you look at your congressman, whoever it is that you guys sent down, you know, sent down to D.C. And you realize that they're all just puppets. I feel like we're watching a performance, you know, and who can say the most outrageous thing? You know, the Republicans don't want to sign this because they want, you know, slavery and they want you back in change. You know, the Democrats don't want to sign this because they want grandma to die. Whatever it is, you're watching just it. it to me, it's a play. That's why I don't mm -hmm. think I, that's why I think if you're black, you shouldn't be beholden to any political party. Democrat I, or Republican. Right. I mean, I, I think that any concept of saying that I am a Republican forever or a Democrat forever is a nonsense. You know, you should always look at the candidates that are running and any person that is running saying that they want to grow government is your enemy. Why do you think people give you a lot of backlash for questioning people and having questions? I see all the time with Charlemagne, if we question something that Kamala Harris did or question something that Joe Biden did or, or question somebody that's Democrat did, why do you think... Uh, how will people have so much backlash when you ask so many questions? Well, because I think that they don't realize that they've been manipulated against their own interests. And a lot of it is, you know, when you start telling the truth, you become a problem to the establishment, right? So if you're the military industrial complex and you want people to just kind of sleepwalk into another war, and I'm sitting here telling you that, you know, Pentagon just can't keep finding the trillions of dollars that they send overseas. They've got this budget and they're sending all this money to Ukraine. And then they say, oh, we don't know where all the money went. It's being laundered and it's being sent back to a very small group of powerful people. And so when you have someone like me who's cutting through all of the emotional arguments, you have to turn that person into persona non grata. 
right? And what better way to do it than to have their own community attacking them and saying that they're, you know, pro-white or anti-black. I mean, it's, it's a nonsense things that they say about me. If you listen to what I'm actually saying, I'm sitting here providing a blueprint for black Americans to get ahead because it's time, okay? It's time. We've been doing this for a very long time in this country. Black America, wake up, okay? They don't like you. They don't like us, okay? There's so not, not anti- America government. has- they yes. government. America. Yeah, yeah. like the, the government, the American government, why would you think the American government wants to help you? Well, at what point in history has mm-hmm. that proven to be right? And I'll challenge that and I'll make it wider to all Americans. When has it ever been the circumstance that you felt that the government really just was out for your own best interests? Interests. Think of them as a corporation. They want to grow themselves. They want new departments, bigger departments, uh, larger budgets like any other corporation would want. And they never want to leave D.C. because we don't have term limits, which we should have, right? If we had term limits and said, you can only serve for four years, well, then guess what they would be doing for those four years? Trying to shrink government because they'd have to come back out and and be us, right? Mm -hmm. Um, When you look at the way that your tax dollars are being spent, you should be outraged. You should be angry. But stop thinking that the enemy is, you know, they constantly have us arguing against each other. Women versus men, black versus white, you know. It's a nonsense. The reason why they want us constantly warring is because it distracts from all of us coming together and taking a look at who the real criminals are. And the real criminal criminals are this small group, this small cadre of powerful people that I think we're virtually all still on a plantation. They just made it look nice. You know, you got a nice chair. We got mm-hmm. nice chairs here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we're show. all still on a on a plantation. Shut up. <laughs> and Candace Owens doing something that she does like so unbelievably eloquently talking about the trash of black music culture and how degenerate it is. And it's, um, well, Candace Owens is uh, forte here, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Okay, because I have been feeling like in my heart that something weird's going on with black media. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, what, what is this trash that we're trying to sell as good music? This is not, this isn't black culture. I hate that black people even call it black culture because that's like, no. Vultures came in and took black culture, turned it into something else. Like I said, I've said it many times. I grew up listening to Lauren Hill. Stop trying to tell me this is black culture. Like I grew up in my grandfather's house listening to The Temptation. Stop trying to tell me if this is black culture. It's not. This is well, rotten. Finally, Candace Owens makes the case that we were all better off under Trump. Again, walking right in the lion's den and doing this. Pretty remarkable. Vivek Ramaswamy did the same thing. Maybe they should run on a ticket together. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is Candace Owens and making the case for Trump and his economic policies for minority communities. Solutions, you are literally advocating for the government to come into your check and take more money from you. No, that makes sense. How how were people better under under Trump, though? Like, like, what what are some things that you can point to? Well, I mean, like I said, common sense, everybody was living better under Trump, but just in in terms of the environment for people that were entrepreneurial, uh, definitively one of the first things he did was he started slashing regulations, like, you know, slashing these barriers that prevent people who want to go into business from starting a business because they learned that there's all of these government agencies that are, you got to get this in place. You got to get this in place. You have to get, you know, this license. That's, that's government agencies that are actually standing between you and starting a company. And so on his very first day, he was just like cutting regulations left and right, saying, throw this one out, throw this one out, throw this one out, which freed up the markets. At the end of the day, what I am is I'm a free market capitalist. Free the markets, allow people to compete fairly, stop allowing the government to stop people or, you know, de-incentivize them from creating uh, new jobs. I'll give you an example. A cousin of mine wanted to start a food truck. Great. Awesome. Love for you to do that. And he looked into like how many certifications and barriers yeah. there were mm-hmm. before he could actually start the food truck. Mm-hmm. That is the government growing powerful. Essentially, you have to have money or you have to know somebody to to play the game for you to be able to start from nothing and make something of yourself. Economic mobility is is really what it's about. So, I mean, that was one of the things that I, I loved the most about Trump is that he was very sensible. He, he has a very good business head. He understands the business environment and every person should want to, you know, should be aspiring not to to work for a bunch of people that don't have your best interests. But to I be agree able... with that, but so many of his businesses have failed. though. Yeah, but even failing is a part of the entrepreneur. Things that I've tried to do have failed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And I don't ever let that be a barrier. Like, I think that there's always this psychological mindset of people that are are fearful to fail. That's the best way for things to happen because you learn Mm. so much in failure. Mm. And people always want to point to and mock somebody for failing. Like, oh, she tried to do this and then she failed. Well, at least she tried, right? What are you doing? And everybody has losses. Yeah, and you learn from them. You grow from those losses, you know? And and that's another, yeah, that's the thing that really bothers me too is like that, that psychological conditioning of like, 
well, what's the point in trying? Because you might fail. It's like, no, you should try and you might fail. And then you'll learn. And the next time you try. you. And then getting down to the root of the issue that both parties are guilty of actually destroying America, which is 100 percent true. Candace Owens on the swamp. Yeah. So I think what you're describing is that there was this there was this fracture in the conservative movement uh, because people realized that when he was referring to the swamp, what he meant was it didn't actually matter if you were on the left or the right. They were all working together in D.C. and selling out all of America. I mean, there is no reason why you go to D.C. and become a multimillionaire. You're supposed to be there to serve the American people. You're you're there taking our tax dollars. So what was happening was these lobbying interests, like, you know, Big Pharma goes down and they lobby and they'll offer money to a candidate to go push a drug, like the COVID vaccine. Or they'll lobby for war. That's like, you know, biggest lobby, of course, military and industrial complex. So we're all suffering. You're going to work because these lobbyists are getting their incentives done by buying out these politicians. And so Trump kind of hit the scene as somebody who wasn't bought and paid for because he didn't need their money. He wasn't like a random congressman going to D.C. with no money. And he just started talking about the swamp. Like, it's not even Republican or Democrat. And I want people to wake up to that because I'm not here like ride or die for Republicans. They all sell us out. Like, the stuff that they did during COVID is criminal. It's just, it's criminal. And Ooh, both- found on it. I mean, the, just the 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 free handouts. First off, trillions of dollars. You're, you're you're signing these omnibus bills. If you read into it, where that where that money is going, it's insane. It's mm-hmm. it's literally going, you know, to museums, boards of museums. They're quite literally money laundering is what's happening when they sign these bills. But they keep it so that the information level is so low for Americans that it's like, oh, COVID's so bad. Like, we're going to give you a check that's like, you know, $300. This basically describes welfareism, right? Like, despite the fact that there's been trillions of dollars since um, the establishment of welfare, black Americans are poorer today than we were before it. People don't know this, but during the time of Jim Crow, before welfare was established in the 1950s, black Americans were actually outpacing white Americans in this country in terms of economic growth. And the reason for that was because our families were together. We had good values. The government only wants to give you the bare minimum. But where's the rest of the money? Mm-hmm. Where is it going? They sign these bills making you think that this money is going to you. It's not. They are stealing from the American people. So we are um, obviously big Candace Owens fans on this program. We wish her all the best. She is such a fearless fighter uh, for common sense in the country and non-insanity. And she's not. she's just not scared to go there. <laughs> she has... Regularly and often done. So very interesting times. Um, It's exciting times, to be quite honest with you. I'm excited about it. Uh, And the breaking of the wheel is now at hand. I do find it interesting that now that the, you know, sort of the the Daily Wire ship has sailed with Candace Owens, she's now doing all this other new media. Like she's now doing all these other big hits and really getting back out there from a media persona perspective. So we wish for more of that. Uh, Godspeed, Candace. And keep spitting bars. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. See ya.